this is the McKibben training video for the combo shear break roll. This has three tools built into one. Shear means to cut a piece of metal, to, to shear it, like a big heavy duty pair of scissors. Uh, break means to bend, effectively, that's, that's, that's what's meant by it. So this is bending it. Um, the rotor that, and then the slip roll is this piece, these rollers up at the top. So if you had bigger versions of these, then they would be individual. Um, for now, we have this combo, so this, this is meant for sheet metal. If we find that people are really into sheet metal, then we can get bigger versions of each of these. Um, this is a manual tool, meaning it's, you feed it using your hands, it's not pneumatic, um, which means that it's definitely somewhat safer. It's it's only going as, as you tell it to go. So if for some reason your hands were in there or if you were in some position where your fingers were getting pinched and you start to see that happening, you can just stop and move your fingers. Um, that makes it much safer than the pneumatic equivalent where if your fingers are in the wrong place, your fingers are not going to be there anymore. Um, so we're just going to go through these things progressively. Um, in terms of what this is for, it's for, for sheet metal again, up to a thickness of uh, 20 gauge. So 20 gauge is about 0 0.03 inches thick, so you can get a pair of micrometers or calipers to get a sense. In general, when you buy metal, you buy it by the gauge. Higher number gauge means thinner metal. So 20 gauge is the limit, meaning 18 gauge is too thick, and certainly anything lower than that. So we'll, we'll start with the shear. So all three motions are controlled with this single crank, which is pretty convenient. So you can see all of them actuating at the same time. And you can just turn it continuously. So it's, it's operating all of them at the same time, and you get it into the position that you need just by turning the crank. Um, the crank is movable. So let's say for some reason you want it on this side, you just unscrew one of the handles, move it over there. It's pretty easy. Let's say you wanted more leverage. You could loosen it up on the end, Retighten it and then have more leverage, just increasing this lever arm. Or say you were rolling, in which case you're mostly going for speed, then you just put it in the middle so you can spin it quickly. Um, so that's the idea there. Then, um, in terms of, we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll start with the shear at the bottom and work our way up. So this is a piece of aluminum, um, and I'm just going to grab a pair of calipers just to measure it. So here we have digital calipers. We have both digital and dial calipers, depending on what floats your boat. So we'll just grab these, turn them on. These let you measure in millimeters, inches, and fractions of an inch. So we've just closed them. Gonna push zero to zero it out. Take our piece of metal, close it up, and we're at 0 0.06 inches. Uh, before I said that 20 gauge was the maximum thickness for material, and I think that that's a good rule for steel. Um, for aluminum, you can probably go a little thicker. So for something um, like this width, going down to 16 gauge is, is probably okay. Um, what you can do is, is you can just test it. If it seems like you're going to have to be pushing a whole lot, then don't do that. Anything hardened, you're not going to be cutting. Um, and if it seems like it's giving a bunch of resistance, you're going to damage the blades if you try to cut too much, uh, or if you're, if you're applying too much force, because the blades, same as on a pair of scissors, will try to slide around and it'll, it'll damage the blade. So, um, yeah. So we don't want to do that. So preferably thinner materials. If you're trying to cut something thicker, then you're going to use some kind of saw, the water jet, um, another tool will do a better job of cutting it than this one. This is, this is for pretty thin sheet metal, and frankly this piece is a little on the thick side. Um, so what we will do is first see if we can make this cut, and if it doesn't work well, then, then we will find something thicker. So this bar is used for holding the piece of material down onto, the, onto this surface. Um, it's also a good way of making sure your fingers don't get in there. This piece of metal is to help align so it keeps your piece straight. Um, because our piece, so what I'm trying to do is cut it here so that we can use this piece further up. Um, we, 
it's, it's not going to be able to reach all the way over there. So we'll just line it up here um, and, and pull down. So what I'm going to do is get a little more leverage. I'm just going to extend this bar out and pull. And it just snipped it. So it cut right along that line. Grab this from the other side. And so that's how the shear works. Um, you, if you find yourself really heaving on it, then you probably want to find a different tool. This looks like a good cut. It doesn't look like it was smushing or anything bad like that. Um, there's going to be a slight burr on one side. So this is smooth. A burr is just a little rolled over piece of metal. And so before you were to use the rollers, you would want to make sure to get rid of that burr so you aren't leaving little grooves in this in these slip rolls. Um, even though it is aluminum, that little fine burr could, could get in there. So next we're going to use the brake. So the brake normally has a whole bunch of these inserts, the upper portions of the brake, um, of different widths. So depending on what you're doing, you can orient them how you like. Here, this looks like maybe an eight inch, maybe a five inch piece, or four inch uh, pieces, and but you can adjust them as you need to. I'm not sure where the others are. If they aren't here, then we'll order them. Um, the way you'd adjust it is just by taking an Allen wrench and removing these and moving them around as you see fit and then it'll just clamp down on it. So there aren't holes, it just, it just pinches them. So let's say you were trying to make a box, for example, then you'd want to make sure that it was just a piece fitting inside there so you could fold it up. Here, since we haven't made any folds yet, we can just use the full length. It doesn't really matter to us where it is. Um, so as we make the fold, the, you would obviously have a line if you wanted to have it in a particular place or measurement to make sure you're getting it exactly where you want it. Um, so we're just gonna open this back up, put this in, and we'll have a pretend mark on there somewhere. And I'm just gonna handle again. And then as we push down, we'll put a nice crease in there. And if you go all the way, and then back out, then you should have a nice 90 degree bend. So that's a nice crisp angle. Um, what you can do is you can put some grease on there to help things move more nicely. So you just take a rag with some general purpose grease and wipe it on there. That'll just help the metal slide more smoothly. Same goes for this. Just make sure to wipe off any excess. You just want enough to lubricate it a little bit. Um, if you were to be making a box, then you would do a better job of getting everything lined up nicely. For this purpose, doesn't matter a whole lot. Also, if you're making a box, then you would want to do a little more research where you would do is take a notch out of the corner using maybe the bandsaw, maybe shears if it was thin metal, so that when it comes up, the two edges come up nicely together. Here, you can see you'd have a tough time getting that, getting that edge up. Um, so I'm just going to cut this off again so that we can go to the slip roll. So now we have this piece. And there are a few ways that you can deburr this piece before you put it in here. Um, one is just with a hand file. So here we have a hand file. Um, when you're using a file, it's important to always push. It, the teeth are, are oriented so they cut when you're pushing forwards. So this way there's very little resistance. This way there's more resistance. Um, sometimes people will drag backwards and that takes the teeth and flattens them out. So you want to make sure you're, you're using a pushing motion. So it's pretty easy to feel the burr. So here there's nothing. Here there's nothing. So all good on this side and on the back side you can feel the burr. I can feel the burr. And so you can just do this by hand and then that's all it takes just to get rid of that little curled over piece of metal. So that's one really quick option. Another is using the belt grinder. There's a whole video on the belt grinder um, so you want to watch that if you, if you haven't already. making sure that the rollers are in a good height. Um, so there, there are three roll, rolls here. These two are the initial ones that hold the metal in place and feed it forwards. And you want them to be pinching tightly, because if it's not pinching, then it won't be pulling. It can just slide through. So um, 
this just keeps the roller in place. That's not, we want just that one. And then this, we're just gonna tighten down on until it's, until it's snug. So that was easy, and then we can roll backwards to get that out. And then same over here. It won't, can't even get in, so we're gonna loosen this a little bit. More, all right, now we can get in, and just a little snug back down. Take that back out. Now we can go to the back side. And on the back side, you can see these two knobs. And so these knobs adjust the position of this roller, and this is the one that gives the radius. So we're going to start by rolling these backwards, and you want to make sure that it's parallel. If these, if, if it's not parallel, then you're going to have a weird twisted curve. Um, so I'm rolling these back down until it's at the bottom. Um, and then what we're going to do is feed it through, and the first time, probably nothing will happen. And as I mentioned before, you know, a little grease will really help this go easier. So we're feeding it through, nothing much, grab it, and then we're going to take each one, and we can rotate it a full turn each way. So we're rotating both of them a full turn to pull it up. When it starts biting and actually bending, it'll happen pretty quickly, and then we'll increment by a half turn each time so that you don't overshoot the curve that you're going for. So right now, we'll just go for a shallow curve. You're going for a full cylinder, then that's a different story, obviously. Something else to note is that every time you go, you want to alternate directions. Um, if you don't, there'll be a little flat spot that isn't getting bent each time. So we're going to alternate directions. So still, not a whole lot happening. Another turn. And you can get going pretty fast, just obviously making sure that you're not getting any part of your body in the rollers. Um, another note is that there are grooves on the far side. There are three different grooves, and those are for the wire. So if you have like a tube wire, um, then you can put them right in there, the three different sizes, to bend those into a circular shape. Right. Now we're starting to get a little curve to it. So now we're going to just go by a half turn. Making sure now that I'm flipping directions. The reason that this machine is on a cart is because sometimes you have bigger, awkward shapes and you want to make sure that you can orient it where you need it to be. So it might be a little annoying that it's moving around, but it's nice that you can have it wherever you need it. Right. A little more curve now. We'll just go a few more. Now, we're just as a reminder, we're going by half turns each time. Is if it matters to you that it's a nice curve, you want to make sure that your piece is very straight each time that you go through. Um, otherwise, you'll come up with a weird shape. And just some other notes are underneath here. There is this back thing that screws in here. And if you're doing longer bends, it acts as a support for your material. If you're doing a cut, it can help support it. Um, so that's, that's what that's for. Uh, something else on the topic of making sure it's going in straight is let's say you were trying to make a cone. Um, the way you might make a cone or a cylinder if you didn't want to, if it didn't need to be smooth, a quicker way could be using the brake, and instead of doing 90 degree turns, doing more, or, sorry, creases, you could do more shallow creases. And so you could get a whole uh, big shape, like a cylinder, um, that had more angled sides, just by going around each time and putting progressive creases in it. Or if you wanted a cone, then you just put it in at an angle. Um, so I think you can get the sense that here that we're getting the shape. You could keep going. Um, we'll go a few more times. I just did a full turn just so you can see what a more aggressive shape looks like. And eventually it'll just wrap all the way around. So there's the two turns. So now this can be our last one.
go, it'll just keep getting more and more rounded over. Um, if you had greased up these wheels, then you'll just want to wipe that off. Um, as you can see, it's pretty consistent if we don't have a flat spot because we're rotating. Um, there are a bunch of adjustments uh, on here that in general should need to be made. It should be pretty well set up. Um, and if there are extras of these, then you can just leave them on this surface when you're not using them. Um, if there is extra grease, you'll also wipe it off the wheels. Uh, and hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.